Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss EMI measurements and standards. So this is almost the one which we covered in the first chapter. So it's a recap of what we have learned in the first chapter. Okay, so I have uh, listed in this order. First, let us see what is the EMI measurements and standards. And uh, one of the important measurements what we have learned is open area test site. And that is exclusively made for RE and RS. And so we will be discussing about those uh, emission and uh, uh, immunity related tests by using open area site. Then we'll be discussing about one more testing procedure that is called transversal electromagnetic cell, that is PEM cell, and its architecture and all other details we'll be discussing. So this is the order it's been planned for this video. So first we'll see what is the electromagnetic indifference measurements and its standards. So already we have discussed uh, the different standards like a uh, civilian standard, military standard, FCC standard, American standard, IEEE standards, like so many standards are there for low frequency equipments and high frequency equipments, how much it radiates as well as how much it has got even work in the midst of uh, electromagnetic environment. So that we have already discussed in the first chapter. It's going to be a recap of that what we have learned in the uh, beginning chapters. Before getting to it, as I told you, what is the need for testing? The intrasystem intra EMC for stable operation and performance, as well as the quality. Uh, Intersystem EMC is for the production of radio service and the safety from the danger. So intra within the system, uh, the component has to work stably, very stable it should work. And the performance should be very good and the quality also good. Uh, it should be ensured for that purpose. Intrasystem EMC can be productive. Similarly, intersystem EMC, that is between the systems, and that also has to be productive, especially what type of production is. Uh, so, from outside, there should not be any uh, interference. So, production of radio services and the safety from the dangers. And for that, uh, we have got some regulations and certificates. It can be divided into two class this chart tells you that uh, the two class of uh, EMI EMC testing EMC testing electromagnetic compatibility testing is one is for emission the other one is for uh, humidity uh, that we call as susceptibility okay so under EMI -E, EMI EME the emission we have a radio emission and conductive emission conductive emission is mostly for low frequency and uh, radio emission is for higher frequencies in uh, low frequencies ICE and CIS PR uh, standards are available and in, in that standards what extra exactly we'll be looking for is we'll be looking for voltage and current we'll be measuring voltage and current in the case of high frequency the radiation emissions we will be looking for magnetic field electric field or both together sometime uh, conducted power disturb dis uh, disturbance also will be uh, measuring over here in the case of RE. In uh, susceptibility test, uh, what we'll be looking for is again here is a radiated uh, immunity and conducted immunity details will be testing. Again, here the rules are uh, ICC and uh, ISO standards, TC standards also available. Uh, in the radiated immunity, we'll be discussing about magnetic fields and uh, uh, electric fields in conducted susceptibility we will be checking the high frequency or low frequency surge test uh, and EFT burst and ESTs all these things we'll be discussing so this is overall again the test will be either for intra system or inter system again the EMC test may be for emission or maybe it may be susceptibility emission has to be minimum and the susceptibility should be maximum so it should have a more immunity otherwise i can call it as uh, um, immunity skills the immunity in the presence of emi uh, how the system works is called a ems test automatic susceptibility test so that is the immunity skills the immunity skills should be maximum and uh, the system how much it radiates uh, so the purpose has to be served uh, above that purpose whatever amount of radiation is there that is unwanted radiations that should be limited so that means how much it radiates is the another test immunity test and uh, uh, emission test these are the two tests we perform so inter system or otherwise intra systems testing we do similarly these two also will perform so that's about the uh, 
uh, testing and its needs. Next, uh, what is the effect of common effective EMI? If you ask me, there may be maybe annoying effects will be there. Uh, very often, momentary and random disturbances will be there in radio and television receptions that we would have seen in car passing in the road. Uh, when at the time of Yagyuda antenna, do this in time, uh, maybe our monitor will be flickering and that is um, momentary and otherwise called as random disturb disturbance. And uh, sometimes dis uh, disturbing effects are like uh, it may uh, reset the system, unwanted reset and uh, change the status in settings in the computer that would have happened in your, uh, in your um, um, uh, computers. I mean, personal personal computers, PCs, when you have, would have unwantedly, it would have restarted. Uh, otherwise, it would have changed the state or it would have changed the timing. Even computer in your, even your mobiles, you would have seen this when you switch off and switch on. And some old mobiles goes back to not Android and previous versions, you can see that goes to the older dates. You have to reset the dates. So that uh, resetting, unwanted resetting and the change of states or some of the other disturbance happens due to EMI. And the malfunctioning of computer keyboards, when you press A, some other uh, key will press or may not, uh, may not displayed. So these and all the other disturbance you would have noticed. Apart from this, there is a catastrophic uh, situations also there. So what is that? The burning of electronic components, loss of data, change of threshold setting, improper and unwanted operations, and sometimes biological hazards. All these things comes under catastrophic situations. So this is some uh, examples, See, like if the radiation quantity is around 80 means uh, it is a uh, minor changes will happen in blood and it goes up to 500 and that means uh, it go uh, even it burn the human being. So that much radiation if you are exposed to it, it will be burning. So this is the chart given in your textbooks. So that tells you different level of uh, radiation quality and its possible effect. Okay. And uh, and at this juncture, I would like to tell you one information. Professor from IIT Mumbai, Grease Kumar, he has done a lot of studies on the radiation effects on human being. Okay, so if you Google it, you get a lot of information about Grease Kumar. And then uh, next one more thing is what happens to the materials and components? Uh, what happens to the resistor, capacitor and crystal and etc. etc. And what should be the radiation level in radiance has been given and what, what should be the radiation level and what will be the likely effect has been shown. Most of the things will be improper or it may not work or it can burn the uh, digital circuits or the components what you have will malfunction because if it exposed to this much of radiance of uh, radiation. Okay, so that's about the uh, effect. And then biological effect of EMI means there are so many like EM waves, light, heat, X-ray and gamma rays are all different forms of electromagnetic radiations. And when we expose to these um, uh, radiations and uh, all these waves have different wavelength. So uh, because of that, the effect also will be different. Uh, the hazardous effects on human and material will be uh, different and that can be categorized into two things. One is the thermal effects, other one is non-thermal effect. If thermal means uh, uh, because of this radiation, uh, ionization takes place. So, so ions move here and there because of that thermal heat will produce and then in, end up in burning. And non-thermal is it, it leads to not improper functioning, non-performance, cancers, all these things are the example we, what we, which we have discussed in the chapter one again. So that's about uh, the different effects. Now the advantage of EMIMC uh, standards, why we need these standards. So when you have these standards, it, is, uh, it tells you that the standards have been satisfied, then it tells you that our systems are very uh, compact, compactability is there, reliability is there, and maintainability is there. It all increases uh, even in the midst of EMI. Uh, my, our system is very compact enough to reliable enough and the maintainability also easy uh, for us. So that's why we say that it should satisfy the standards. And design safety margin is provided for this. Apart from this, operate the EMI scenario satisfactorily. That's what I said, compatibility. And product life also increases. We know like if it is exposed to these EMI, then my system may malfunction. So if I'm not exposing to that much of EMI, then uh, I can save God and then increase the lifetime of my product and I have profit or possible. So for the seller point of view, uh, they can tell that uh, this is EMIMC certified equipment. So that means it's more reliable and more lifelong. Even in the midst of EMI, it can work. 
and that way also it's possible that means we are uh, we can we can able to um, uh, filter out and then proceed i think in the class i would have told about this um, uh, particular example that is motorola uh, router example i would have told the cisco router did not do that but motorola router was able to work even in the midst of um, midst of emi okay and then of later then only other people started uh, thinking of in the midst of emi how to work they thought of it and they brought the uh, filtering component into their adaptiveness into their uh, components okay and this happened in uh, and 22005 uh, in usa in a company and they explained in the this story short stories i've already explained so uh, that's about the advantages so you have a lot of advantages if it is emi mc certified equipment compatibility reliability and maintenance increases and safety margins are provided so the people know how to work how to operate safety measures are known to them and even in the midst of emi can work product life also increases and profit also more that's why people go for uh, emi mc certifications and check whether it satisfies the standards let us see now the conducted emission and conducted susceptibility as well as the radiation emission and radiation susceptibility so you can see this is the emission part for emission we'll have uh, two test uh, ce and re test and for humidity that is susceptibility test c cs and rs test will have sometime ci we call it as ci and ra instead of susceptibility we call it as humidity so when it is radius how much it emits uh, when it is uh, uh, under test how much it is absorbing so one is radiation test and one is the absorption test that's what even this slide is the first unit slide i'm just repeating it okay so this i think you know about this radiation so when it uh, when it is connected how much noise components there and because of noise component how much it radiates okay that's what it is uh, uh, radiated emission testers okay radiated emission test the equipment which is there in the test uh, may have to uh, will be used to, to test these standards uh, cis pr test 11 12 13 25 22 22 all the different testers and then i mean uh, yeah, wc 95 54 are the other testers test standards we follow the frequencies it goes to up to uh, some extent 18 gigahertz it goes up to 1 gigahertz uh, sometime it goes to up to 18 gigahertz this also already this slide itself repeated slide the testing facility we can do a lot of different uh, testing we can perform uh, open area test sites we can do lse we can do far we can do an sar we can do these are the um, near field far field uh, testing performance you can do equipment needed is you need a receiver and a spectrum analyzer is more than enough to perform this uh, testing okay and um, test antennas uh, depends on the frequency we will be going for either loop antenna dipole antenna log periodic high biconical antennas will be used depends on the frequency and the regulations and others yeah we need to tune and there should be a antenna master etc should be there because in the antenna master we can replace the re change the antenna types and then work on it so that uh, that's about uh, procurement we have for the uh, re and uh, there are two type of uh, equipments available one is class a the other one is class b class a are uh, industrial standards class b is um, civilian applications yeah okay radiation disturbance been told it is um, 40 47 for industry it is um, so 30 db up to 30 40 db it can be for a low frequency in high frequency it is 47 for class b it is 30 37 the same thing is shown in the uh, figure you can see it is um, for a uh, uh, low frequency it is 30 and for high frequency 37 for the case of um, the class b has got um, uh, 30 yeah 30 30 30 37 30, and uh, class a has got uh, 40 47 okay 40 47 db uh, number okay next is your ce ce measurement again the frequency ranges up to 30 megahertz the standards are cis pr standards and the testing facilities a sealed room and a quiet chamber are, uh, is enough and the equipment needed is emmc receiver spectrum analyzers and uh, the common method uses lisn that is a line impedance stabilization network is more than enough to do the conducted emission how much Uh, it is conducting uh, through while well, it is transferring through uh, conducting cables how much it is emitting that is what conducted emission when it is conducting when it is communicating 
how much is radiating and because of the noisy component how much it is radiating that is what this test all about mostly it will be in the low frequency range up to 30 megahertz higher frequency means it start radiating in the space space it is uh, it is while conducting in the cable how much it has been radiating that is the kind of uh, uh, analysis test we perform over here here also again the standards are there that has been given over here so different standards and different uh, values are given class a class b values are given and another average value is also given as usual you can see uh, this is class A, how much it's conducting in microvolt. It is conducting for different frequency range. It's conduct, it conducts in microvolt range. And uh, class B, it is also again conducting in uh, microvolt range. Where it's in the class A will be in the order of uh, 70s, where the class B will be in the order of uh, 60s. Uh, even sometimes can, we can say 50s. The average will be slipping down to 60 over here for class A. And for us, for this, the average is slipping down to of uh, 50s uh, in the case of class b okay so that's about the uh, uh, ce limits so uh, decreasing linearly with the uh, logarithmic of frequency and the lower limit shall apply for at the transition frequencies and the telecommunication ports are example for this telecommunication ports are mainly uh, conducting ports at that time it's very important that uh, transition frequencies are important Next is RS or RI, that is a radi radiated susceptibility. And here the frequency is uh, uh, 82,000 megahertz. The test condition will be, uh, you can see, uh, 1 to 30 uh, volt per meter uh, uh, voltage has to be generated by us and then, uh, and then injected on the uh, a device under test or equipment under test. Okay. And then, uh, then the standards here is uh, IEC and uh, uh, ISO are the standards followed. Testing facilities, FAR, uh, uh, FAR test facilities has been followed here. The equipment needed are like a um, power amplifier because what you generate will be very low, uh, low amplitude signals in order to control, in order to have control over the signal what you generate, uh, we need to amplify it. So first, very first important uh, equipment what we need is it won't be available in the previous two examples of test is a emission test it's it's not needed but uh, whereas the humidity test when you perform power amplifiers are the must it is the first component in it then followed by that we got uh, antennas and far field probes uh, uh, signal generator, directional couplers, power meters, etc. etc. Needed some extent. We will have some software tools. I thought of uh, showing you some softwares in the class, but due to time lag, we could not able to uh, uh, go through those uh, uh, softwares. And but uh, I've given enough information about the uh, mobile apps. There are a lot of mobile apps available, even uh, to test your mobile radiations and other things. I hope you would have started doing something on that. As your quality assessment, please do uh, remember those softwares. There are well equipped softwares available. If you're taking it this as EMAMC as your core area, you will come across these uh, exclusive test softwares. Okay. Then next comes your uh, susceptible conducted susceptibility test. When when um, it is conducting, how much is uh, uh, how much voltage it can have? Up to what level of voltage it can have? Immunity, immunity. That is what is all about. Okay, so the frequency range is up to 80 megahertz. The voltage condition is 10 volt. The standards are IEC and ISO standards are available. And shielded room is needed. And again, here you see power amplifier, signal generator, directional couplers, and CDN and current clamp, all the things needed. And software and etc. etc. needed for this.